this Noongar country, we have smaller groups that make up the greater Noongar nation. This side of the river was called the Bilier people. And Bilier means river people. Does anyone know anything about Yagan or Midjigaru? It was actually the south side of the river, this area, okay? Him and his dad. And he was one of the freedom fighters. The people that were in charge of the group here, especially at settlement time, was uh, Midjigaru and his son Yagan. So they were on this side of the river and they thought he travelled down to Pinjara, Mandra. This particular area here was a meeting place for the Noongar people where they got together to do robberies. The one across the river is actually in Kings Park and here was the one for the people on this side of the river. This is one of the reasons why we're trying to stop that row highway extension going through this particular area. This is one of several uh, registered um, Aboriginal sites, sacred sites in this locality, one of 13 in, in fact. The two wetlands on our doorstep, North Lake and Bibra Lake, were the two most important wetlands for the, for the Aboriginal people that live south of the river. So there's a really strong history and connection with these two wetlands. So as those original land inhabitants, um, really important that we uh, recognise that in the program. Leonard is one of our regulars to the Get Wild About Wetlands program for the Indigenous component and he just comes out and he brings so much gear to work with the children. He brings out little Maya Mayas and kangaroo cloaks and he sets up pools for them to see how the Aboriginal people call fish. Spear throwing. Yeah, he just goes to so much effort and he's really, really passionate about the Indigenous culture and, and sharing that with people. Okay, your turn. That's it, look at this one. Oh, watch out, here it comes. The benefits, um, I reckon, are getting to the kids to give them an idea of the Noongar history, um, the activities they did. So it's just to, to give them an insight of Noongar culture. Also try to mention a little bit about the significance of the area regarding the Noongar people. As long as they get some sort of understanding of the way things were. The Aboriginal people believe that the lakes and the rivers, for instance, was created by the serpent called the Wobble. Went down underground, popped his head up all the way down to Manja Way, then came back another route. So there's two rows of lakes. If the water is clear, they believe that it was okay for you to drink it or swim in it or eat the foods around it. But if the water was murky, that meant that the wogle was occupying that particular water hole, so you just needed to keep away from it while it was in that condition. We are intimately tied with the environment and the animals and to to not understand that, I think, is a problem and that, that to me is something that the Indigenous Dreaming Stories bring out very clearly about the close connection between humans and the land and the animals. Everything in the bush has got its purpose for being there, whether it be a small plant, big tree, small animal, big animals, they've all got their reasons. Especially with taking off things from the bush, so take what you need, leave the other stuff behind, don't destroy things for the fun of it. If you can get to the kids and educate them in that respect, they'll go up knowing that they can't do certain things when they're out in the bush. Because with the Noongar kids it's a different ball game because it's a way of life for them. It might not be the way they live now, but it gives them a look at how their forefathers would have lived in the early days. Yeah. It's understanding in both ways. If we have the younger people today working with the old people today, we can sort of keep the fight going. Work with the young people today to keep them involved with stuff like this to um, carry on. They're going to be leaders, so once they get in that position to make decisions, and hopefully they'll look at everything they've been taught both sides of the fence and make the right decision involving everybody.